This episode of Lubaka video is brought to you by Fishing Sir. There you go, fishing sir chest waders are here. Let's see if I can open this one handed. Here the packaging about a four, maybe five pound Amazon box. Stay tuned till the end to see how you can win this guideline. It's a giveaway sponsored by Fishing Sir. This is the 30 pound, and these are the long awaited chest waders. Fishing sir, one more cast so I can go and fish some walleyes for the tournament. There is a fishing sir waterproof bag for your phone, for your fishing license, a little bit of cash. You need to buy some bait or buy yourself out of trouble when you're on shore. And these are the boot foot, breathable, or as I like to call them, partable readers. Can't wait to put them on and go sleep some walleyes. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Lupaka once again, coming at you from the cleaning table here in Wisconsin Dells. Today I got a couple of walleyes. Slab crappie. Oh, now that I've secured the tournament entry, I gotta get something for the frying pan. What better than a slab on the lake hopping custom baits? This guy has been bitten before. Very, very deep, probably eight feet down. Beautiful fish. 18 incher. This one right here. This one hit the Smithwick. So, even with the little time I managed to spend in, uh, I got a few fish. I was happy to be out there. It wouldn't have been possible without uh, fishing sir's uh, chest waders that I got. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I would have lost a lot of baits. I would have had very limited access to the spots that I wanted to fish. And uh, with the river being as high as it was, I had such a big advantage over the boaters and over the guys that were trying to soak minnows from shore, getting snagged all the time, not being able to unsnag and save their baits. I also did find quite a few lures, so uh, this kind of paid off. So the best fish that I got, uh, got me 25 bucks. So it's not every day where you can get a two pound fish that gets you $25, so that was pretty cool. Uh, now having said that, uh, let's get a few tips about fishing with waders. First, foremost, probably one of the most important things, uh, before you store your waders after using, and this should be common sense, but not too many people think about that, always, always thoroughly dry your waders before you put them away from st for storage. Uh, if you're planning to wash your waders, never use detergent. Don't use any bleach, nothing like that. Just wash them by hand, use a hose. A lot of times uh, at the cleaning tables, there is a power wash type of hose that will help you get off any debris. Uh, you don't want to get any fish slime left on them when you store them. Oh, thanks helicopter guy. It's very helpful for my audio. <laughs> when you store your waders, Is really when you store your waders, always store them in a dry area and uh, the boot foot waders should hang upside down so you should uh, you can get a couple of those uh, fork hangers where you can hang the boots and have the waders hang down this helps for the boots for the rubber boots not to fold and get a crack because that material ages very quickly now we're available uh, kind of like when ice fishing, you use a spud. Uh, when you're fishing with waders, you should use a staff to kind of feel the area. At our familiar areas, definitely 
feel the area ahead of you this way you're gonna be safe a lot of those uh, areas have very steep ledges so you might step up step off a cliff very easily you don't want that to happen always use your belt they come with a belt for a reason that belt not only makes your gut look better but it helps you so that when you fall in god forbid when you do fall in it helps for you not to get a lot of water in so it helps you kind of stay afloat for a little bit so you kind of get safer uh, a lot of times it's better to remember uh, don't wait alone especially unfamiliar areas again always if you're in an unfamiliar area uh, try to have a body system alongside you so if you have to wait alone uh, probably save that for areas that you're very well familiar with before entering the waters especially in river systems uh, try to scout the area ahead of you and uh, establish for yourself what are dangers uh, dangers like waterfalls like undertows uh, log jams where your feet can get stuck a few years back at the same tournament in the winter i was helping a guy unsnag his line and i stepped on rebar uh, I ended up uh, in the emergency room later because uh, the rebar went through the boot foot of my waders. Nothing can protect you for that. You cannot be wearing steel toe or anything like this. So it went right through and hit the malleolus on my uh, foot. I got an infection that kept me from walking for a while. Uh, you want to protect yourself at any time. So be observant, read your water, uh, know what's happening. Make sure you're safe out there because after all, a fish is not worth it uh, not, no fish is worth your life remember that one uh, if you use the USGS the US uh, Geological Society network very helpful tool it will tell you when the waters are coming up when the waters are coming down remember if you're fishing near a dam if you hear the siren that means the level is changing they might be opening more gates that means that you could get a rush of water that can wash you away so be careful with that be mindful of others a lot of times you have boaters rushing through and they can basically tip you over if they kick in a big wave so be be helpful to to be careful with that that's a very helpful tip tip <laughs> it's a very helpful tip this has been just the tip good helpful thing to do is wear a flotation vest uh, a lot of guys neglect that but for safety's sake, especially if you're going to be in very fast waters, it's a must. You need to have a flotation vest. If you have one of those expensive ones that have a cartridge that will expand them and help you from floating down, will help you float away and kind of be safe, do that. Tighten your belt. Remember to tighten your wader belt. That's very, very important. Always walk slowly, smoothly and carefully. That's a must. Back in the day, one spring, uh, when the waters were coming up under the dam here, there was a huge barn door that hit me in the back, in the small of the back. And if I was any deeper or if I was in any more unstable water, I would have been flushed away. Very dangerous. Uh, another thing, if you're wearing stocking foot waders, always wear the proper footwear the proper boots that match those uh, waders and also the proper sole. So if you have felt, for the bottom depending on the rocks uh, you might want to use different type of sole so that you don't slip and fall be safe that's a must that's always important and uh, that's kind of a no-brainer but don't keep wading your, your waders are full of water don't do any of that what you get? i got two but oh, i'm almost play almost yeah, trying to bubble play bubble. almost trying to play for the last place No, it's yeah. not gonna pump the last place. Okay, so let's see the other one. There you go. That's cool. I don't need That'd be like 10th place. <laughs> Probably. Oh, we got on that one. There you go. One, nine, three. Okay. I made Andy the work. By one, three, nine or something like that. Okay, so I hit, I hit what, 8th place? 8th so far, yeah. 8th so far. There's still time for people to beat me. Farther. <laughs> <laughs> you got 8 keepers? 9. 9? So he got see. that up on Lit Alley. I was there Did yesterday. You? I didn't do good.
Hansen was throwing up on the rock pile. Was he? Yeah, he had a whole, whole crew up there with him the other night. Nice. Man, they were so drunk, they were yelling and screaming. And... Well, yesterday it was just like spring bumper boats. <laughs> yeah, there was nine boats right there below the island. That's a pike, guys. That's not a musket. Uh, that's a pike, northern pike. That's Holy a northern. Crap. That's a keeper too. Look how full he is. Oh my god. Full of shad. Yeah. And somebody bit him too. Yeah. See that? Wow. <laughs> Where'd I get him at? Right here on his cheek. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right here, right on his cheek. Can you get it out? Yeah, I'm trying. We want pliers. Fish. You want pliers? <laughs> it's stuck in there. Yeah. Rocky's gonna be pissed. Yeah, he is. He's gonna be like, I leave and you catch fish. What the? <laughs> it should come up. Get it out. It's like right there. Oh, there you go. You gonna keep it? I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't He's know. a keeper. Is he? You well, keep him. It's it's. Yeah, if you have a hook in the face, not gonna be a walleye. I, I know. We, I, well, we thought we it thought was. Thought it was a I was like, There's no too. way. It's a beautiful fish. Yeah. All right, bro. Let him, awesome. Let him go. Let him go. You know, I've never caught a northern bottom fish. Oh, ever. Guy wants to see. Northern, yeah. <laughs> That's what we thought at we first thought too. At first too, it's like holy smokes! This is a baby. That's a nice. Daddy I wonder how fish. big you think he is. This one? You're, yeah, it's George, probably you thirty. It's bigger than my bump board. <laughs> thirty some inches. Yeah. Right, put Thirty-two him back, so maybe. Let's try to revive him a little bit. Let him go face first. Wow! Like a champ. Yes. Good job, man. Kicking off with a super late start. I basically lost more than half of the time of the tournament. So let's see what happens. I want to thank Fishing Sir for bringing me those wagers. Let's see what luck they bring. First taker on the jointed balls of that one. And this guy 